the million ringgit? So if you know the value of Islam and your salah, who would want the million ringgit? And believe me, on average in Bombay, I used to spend 17 hours a day in my office. Our office used to work 25, 24 hours a day. 24 hours a day. I used to spend about 17 hours a day. During the holidays, maybe two days a month, I used to do personal business. Maybe less than three weeks a year. Profit? Millions of dollars. Barka. So why should I ask for money for giving lecture? Allah is giving it directly. Millions of dollars multiplied by four and drink it. For working hardly two, three weeks a year. You invest and Allah gives you. The best investment is with Allah. I'm telling you this not to show off. To tell you that this person standing in front of you who was a stammerer couldn't have dreamt of speaking in front of 25 people. Haza min fazli rabbi by the niyama of Allah. MashaAllah, Facebook, 17.4 17 17 million. You know, this doesn't carry any value. But if you're looking at worldly things, most of the Muslims think Daim is miskin. Here you have an example in front of you because of the grace of Allah standing in front of you. MashaAllah. Followers are millions, even enemies are large, MashaAllah. So much so that today, most of the countries are after me, majority. You know, in India, about two years and four months back, in November 2016, they banned the organization. I'll come to my organization afterwards. And the present Prime Minister, the Narendra Modi, I would like to thank him. He's the Prime Minister now, elections are going on. After one and a half months, whether he remains or not, Allah Wallam. Allah Wallam. Maybe, may not be, I don't know. But presently, he's the Prime Minister. The government is so much against me, they spend tens of millions of dollars to propagate against me on the television channels, in the newspaper, that Zakir is a terrorist. He's promoting terrorism. And they could not find hate speech. Then they say money laundering. And so many years, I'm giving everything clearly to the income tax. This is what I earn. I'm an NRI non-resident and from Dubai. No questions asked. Now when the government is against me, now they're saying money laundering. They're laying allegations. They're laying allegations, public fund, misuse. Get me one person, not two, one person with a receipt who has given any money to the organization and that wasn't used for the activity. But why do I thank Modi? Why? The reason is that previously, Maybe, maybe two-thirds, 65% of the Muslim knew me, and maybe about 10% non, 10 of non-Muslim did not. 10% non-Muslim knew me. Now, after spending millions of dollars in propaganda against me through television channels for his vote bank, today, mashallah, more than 90% of the Muslims in India know me, and more than two-thirds of the non-Muslims know me. Previously. Maybe 15% of Indians knew me now. More than two-thirds know me, alhamdulillah. Those who had seen my lectures before, what are they doing? They are doing duas for me. May Allah save this day of Islam. May Allah give them jazak here. Those who don't know me, have not seen my lecture, they get influenced by the media and they're cursing me. Now when someone curses you wrongly, our beloved prophet said, it benefits you. If someone curses you wrongly on the day of judgment, what will happen? I will get his good deeds. If his good deeds are over, my bad deeds will go to him. Prophet. So I'm thanking Modi. Now there are millions of people doing dua for me. Mashallah. Those who knew me. There are bigger number of people who are cursing me. Both ways are benefiting. Hazam and Fazirab. 
what we realize that as da'is of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have to follow Quran and Sunnah, we have to strive and leave the results to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who will save you. And if anything happens, we are happy with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What we know that the fourth caliph, uh, the second caliph of Islam, Hazrat Umar, may Allah be pleased with him. If you read the Fadail al-Sahaba by Imam Ahmad, hadith number 1280, he asked the Sahabas, what would you pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fill this room up so that you could spend it in the way of Allah? So one Sahaba says, I will pray to Allah to let this room be filled up with gold so that I could spend in the way of Allah. So Hazrat Umar radiallahu anh, he says, ask for something better. So another Sahaba says, I will pray to Allah to let this room be filled up with rubies and jewels and diamonds so that I could spend it in the way of Allah. Umar radiallahu anh says, ask for something better. So the Sahaba says, Ya Amirul Mu'mineen, O leader of the believers, you tell what is better. So he replies, I will pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to let this room be filled up with Abu Ubaidah bin Jarrah, Muad bin Jabal, Hudayfa bin Yaman, the great dais, so that I could send them to spread the message of Allah. See the hikmah of Umar radiallahu anh. He doesn't ask for gold. He doesn't ask for diamonds and jewels. He asks for manpower, professionals. Like Abu Ubaidah bin Jarrah, Muad bin Jabal. These people were great dais so that he could send them to spread the message of Allah. What did our Prophet leave behind? Did he leave behind gold? Did he leave behind wealth? He left behind sahabas. Today we Muslims have the maximum wealth in the world. We have the black gold, we have the oil. Today the Muslims are looked down upon, right or wrong? Right or wrong? Today we have all the wealth in the world. According to me, out of the hundreds richest people in the world, 95% are Muslims. Bill Gates is nothing. I personally know many Arab businessmen who can have Bill Gates in their pocket. It's only in the Forbes list, Bill Gates, now it is Jeff because There are many Muslims, multiple times richer than Bill Gates and Jeff because We have the money, but today we Muslims are looked down upon. Why? At that time, the Sahabas were there, we spread the deen, we were the most powerful people in the world, the Muslims were the torchbearers because we were close to Quran and Sunnah. Today, we are looked down upon because we have gone away from Quran and Sunnah. So my request to my brothers and sisters is that come close to Quran and Sunnah, become a true Muslim profession, Become a true Muslim professional and inshallah you will conquer the world. I would like to end my speech with the quotation of the glorious Quran from Surah Fusilat, chapter number 41, verse number 33, where Allah says, Waman ahasun qala mimman doilallahi wa amilu salihaw, qala inna nimla muslimin. Who is better in speech than one who invites to the work of the Lord? And he says that I am a Muslim. Wa akhiru dawan alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.